Hi class, I trust that you've been diligently working on your review sheet and by now you want to know are my answers correct? So now is the chance to see. So please have your review sheet out and be ready to write or correct your answers. Ideally, you already have these all written in and it's just a matter of changing one or two answers that you may have done wrong. Our first question was, what two types of waves is sound? Of course, sound is both a longitudinal and a mechanical wave. It's called a longitudinal wave because it has compressions and rarefactions. It's called a mechanical wave because it needs a medium. That means it can't travel through space. Now you may wonder, how in the world do the astronauts talk to each other if they're out in space? It's not because they're screaming loud enough, it's because they talk through radio waves. Sound will travel inside their little spacesuit, but it doesn't travel in space in between their spacesuits. So if you'd open it up and scream all you wanted, you wouldn't get to hear it at all. A blue shift is a sound that is higher in frequency because it is moving toward the listener. A blue shift was one of the types of Doppler effect shifts. The blue shift is higher in frequency moving toward you. The red shift occurs when the sound is moving away from you and the frequency there is going to be lower. So again, Doppler shift, blue shift, increase in frequency, moving toward you, red shift, drop in frequency, moving away. <clears throat> what two things define music? The two things that define music is frequencies of music are planned and they sound good together. Whereas noise, noise is pretty much random frequencies that sound nasty together. So the two things you got to remember about music, planned frequencies that sound good together. Sounds with frequencies twice that of a previous frequency is a difference of? That's right, one octave. One octave is twice the frequency. If we go up an octave, it's half the frequency if we would go down an octave. So the magic mathematical term there is multiply by two or divide by two. <laughs> multiply by two if we go up. <clears throat> if I tune my trumpet to my piano and I'm hearing 5 beats per second, the piano's frequency is 826 hertz, what is my trumpet tuned to? Well, if I hear 5 beats per second, that means my frequency is off by 5 beats. So am I 5 beats higher or 5 beats lower? That I can't tell. What I can tell is that I'm off by 5. So I either need to add or subtract. If I'd add 5, I'd get 831. If I subtract 5, I'd get 821. Either one of these is going to be a perfectly acceptable answer. And I will be proud to give you full points for that. If the note G has a frequency of 392 hertz, what is the frequency of G two octaves higher? Again, every time we jump up an octave, we multiply by two. Since I'm jumping up two octaves here, I'm going to have to multiply by two two times, or I could multiply by four if I want to be boring. So 392 times two times two is going to be 1568 hertz. Easy, right? Don't say you can't handle multiplying by two. I know some of you like to quit every time you see a number, but don't. This is easy. Musical frequencies that produce a pleasing sound are called consonances. Consonances make pleasing sounds. These would be like pretty chords that you make in music. So when you play a chord, the notes all go together. It makes a pleasing sound. Everybody smiles and wants to sing along. Frequencies that can be heard are called audible tones. Anything that is audible can be heard. Now in humans, of course, for loud sounds, this is between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. And for softer sounds, that's between 50 hertz and 15,000 hertz. But again, the frequencies that we can hear are called audible. The science of sound is called acoustics. This was the word that Bugs Bunny used in the cartoon yesterday that will also be the bonus on the, quest, on the test tomorrow. So remember acoustics. He said that the little dome was acoustically perfect. So the science of sound is called acoustics. The height of a wave. The height of a wave is called the amplitude. And of course the amplitude measures how much energy is in a wave. How far from the rest position 
Did the medium move? That's the height of the wave. That's the amplitude. One crest plus one trough equals one wavelength, at least for transverse waves. For a longitudinal wave, one wavelength is going to be one compression plus one rarefaction. But for a transverse wave, one crest plus one trough is one wavelength. The stretched out portion of a longitudinal wave is called a rarefaction. Say it again, rarefaction. I know you like to say that word, at least I do. The scrunched up portion of a longitudinal wave, of course, is called a compression. The compression is the compressed part or the scrunched up part of the wave. So remember, compressed, scrunched up, they mean the same thing. So when you see scrunched up, you think, ha, compressed, compression. Sounds of frequencies over 20,000 hertz are called ultrasonic. Ultra means beyond, so anything beyond 20,000 hertz is ultrasonic. And remember that when we deal with very high frequencies, we have very tiny wavelengths. These are the ones that can penetrate very easily and let us see pictures inside your body. The intensity of a sound depends on the amplitude. And of course, the amplitude is a measure of how much energy is in a wave. So the amplitude tells me how much energy there is. The intensity is dependent on energy. Longitudinal waves can be produced by anything that vibrates. That can be a rattlesnake, a vacuum cleaner, your mom yelling, musical instruments, a car driving by. Anything that vibrates makes a longitudinal wave. Now, do all vibrations produce audible sounds? No, only those that are either loud enough and in that correct range of between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Instruments set vibrating by being struck are called percussion instruments. And of course, everybody loves to play percussion instruments because you get to smack them. Don't make me smack you because you didn't get your homework done and you didn't study. I will play you like the drums or make your head into a gong or smack you with cymbals. No, but those are all examples of percussion instruments. What makes a train sound different coming and going? That, of course, would be the Doppler effect. When we have the Doppler effect, the sound is too high when it's coming toward me, and it's too low as it's going away. So it shifts from a high frequency to a low frequency as it goes past me. So the train would sound lower once it passed me. So coming and going are different. Waves that bounce back. These are called reflected waves. Reflected waves are things that bounce like echoes. If the sound comes out from me, hits a hard surface, and bounces back to me, that's a reflected wave called an echo. Waves that curve around corner. Waves that curve around corners are called diffracted waves. Diffracted waves. And in diffracted waves, we're still in the same medium. On the other hand, if we have waves that bend when we are changing mediums, these are called refracted waves refracted waves when we change medium. Now they refract because the speed of the wave is going to change when we change medium. Like when I switch from air to water, it goes more slowly in water than it did in air, and so we see the bending. Like when a straw is in a glass of water at an angle, it looks like it's bent. That's refraction. The substance through which a wave travels is called the medium. Not a large, not a small, but a medium. Remember that waves that need a medium, we call mechanical waves. Waves that don't need a medium, we call electromagnetic, and the electromagnetic ones can travel through space. Mechanical ones cannot. The high point of a transverse wave is called the Colgate. No, no, I'm sorry, the crest. So the crest is the high point of a transverse wave. Nice and simple. The thing that is transferred in a wave is of course energy. Energy is what we transfer in a wave and a wave can transfer energy over very long distances. For instance, we showed you that thing where we had um, an earthquake that was east of India and it smacked into Africa. So all that energy traveled over a very long distance through a wave. The pivot point of a standing wave we call a node. The node was the point of minimum displacement it's also the point of destructive interference. That's where a crest is hitting a trough. 
or a trough is hitting a crest and canceling out. That's why it just pivoted. However, if we have the point of maximum displacement in a standing wave, we call that an antinode. The antinodes were the points of maximum displacement. This was caused by constructive interference, where a crest hit a crest to make a bigger crest, or a trough hit a trough to make a bigger trough. That was constructive interference. That happens in antinodes. Sounds can damage the human ear if they exceed 90 decibels. If you are continually over 90 decibels, you're going to do permanent damage to your ears, like your iPod cranked up at full volume. If your neighbor can hear your iPod, you are damaging your ears. So turn them down so that you can hear your children talk to you. The pitch of sound. The pitch of sound is dependent on the frequency. The pitch is how high or how low a sound is, not how loud or how soft it is. The decibel is the unit of intensity. The intensity of sound affects the volume of, some people say, the loudness of the sound. So the loudness of the sound, the volume of the sound is all dependent on the intensity of the sound and the unit of that is the decibel. Which of the following is the fastest transmitter of sound? Well, sounds, of course, travel fastest in a solid. They travel faster in a solid because the molecules are more tightly packed so the compressions will travel faster through those. What causes two mixed sounds to vary in loudness? That's called interference. We have, of course, two types of interference. Constructive interference is going to make the sound louder. Destructive interference is going to make it softer. Either one of them is going to make the sound vary in loudness. So to vary is to get bigger or smaller. There's variance. Musical frequencies that produce an unpleasant sound we call dissonances. Dissonances are the kind of notes that grate on each other. Like when I play the piano, it sounds pretty nasty. It's dissonant, even though it may have been designed to be a consonant sound. The speed of sound in air, of course, you have memorized, is approximately 343 meters per second. That speed varies with temperature. If it's a little warmer, it'll be a little faster. If it's cooler, it'll be slower. And of course, it travels faster in water and even faster in steel. But the speed of sound in air is 343 meters per second. Fluctuations in volume due to interference between two similar frequencies is the definition of beats. We heard beats the other day. We played the computer made a note and we played the tuning fork and we heard the beats. And of course, we use those to tune instruments that are just a little bit off from each other, and we find out how far off they are by how many beats we hear per second. So if they're off by 5 hertz, we heard 5 beats per second. If they're off by 2 hertz, we heard 2 beats per second. So it works kind of like that. Simple math. The low point of a transverse wave is called the... That's right, just like a little piggy eats out of a trough. So the low point of a transverse wave is a trough. If a wave has a speed of 15 meters per second and has a wavelength of 5 meters, what is its frequency? Now, some of you are going to freak out and say, no, 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 there's numbers involved, man. It's okay. It's not bad. We're going to use the equation V equals F lambda. We're looking for frequency, so F stays there. Lambda is going to move underneath the V, so we're going to end up with F is V divided by lambda. If we do that, we know the V was 15. It says speed of 15. The lambda is the 5 meters, so we're going to have 15 divided by 5. just gives me 3. That's 3 waves per second, or 3 hertz. There was nothing there that was too hard. Plug in the numbers, make it work. Don't quit. The last problems were a little bit tougher. A little bit tougher to understand, not a little bit tougher to actually plug in. But here I told you that AM radio broadcasts frequencies between 550 kilohertz and 1600 kilohertz. What I'm really telling you there is that AM is kilohertz. Kilo is a thousand. FM, its range is between 88 megahertz and 108 megahertz. What I'm really telling you is if you see something FM, it's really megahertz. Mega is million. So kilo is thousand, mega is million. So with kilohertz, we have three extra zeros. With megahertz, we have six extra zeros. 
All radio waves travel at light speed of 299.792.458 meters per second. That's our speed. The station signal numbers tell me their frequencies. I want you to tell me the wavelength. So here I give you two different frequencies because I gave you their call letters. So when you're dialing in on your radio, the numbers that you see there are actually the frequency that that radio station is broadcasting at. So we're going to have the equation again, V equals F lambda. So that means V divided by F equals lambda. I apologize, I stuck the equals in the wrong spot there. So that should say V divided by F equals lambda. And what we're going to do there for both of these, the velocity is going to be the 299.792.458 meters per second. And the frequency are going to be the numbers there. But again, you got to remember FM is megahertz, that's 10 to the 6th. AM is kilohertz, that is 10 to the third. So when we do the first one, we're going to have the 299.792.458 divided by the 99.4, and then I'm going to put exponent 6 because FM is million. When I divide that out, I find an FM wave is about 3 meters long. When we do the same thing for AM, that doesn't mean you can go. That means that I'm recording this during lunch. B, we still use 299.792.458, but now we're dividing by 1140, and we put exponent 3 because it's AM, and AM is in kilohertz, kilo 10 to the third. So 1140 exponent 3, that means that AM waves are huge compared to FM waves. FM waves are a couple times bigger than your body, but an AM wave, 263 meters, that's a big, huge wave. No big deal. The math there wasn't that hard. Just remember, mega means 10 to the 6, kilo means 10 to the 3rd. You got it made. So that's it. That's it for our review sheet, but it's not it for you. I want you to study and study and maybe study. Some of you never study, and that's why you keep getting these 30s and 40s and 50s on a test. This test is a very easy test. Take it home, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. By the time you get back here, it should be easy. Everybody should get an A on this. I should go broke giving out Smarties. I want you to do well on this. I want you to raise that grade up to passing. I want you to get on with your life. Speaking of getting on with your life, be ready to turn in the unit 10 problems about waves and the unit 11, both A and C, tomorrow when I come. Have these ready to go. Don't have another zero on your progress report. Get it done now. Get it done so I don't have to keep nagging at you so that you can graduate, so you can get on with your life and do something productive. Okay? Thanks a lot. Study hard. Be good. Bye-bye.